community of Delray Beach. We are so happy to see you here with us this morning. And we're going to just get started. A um, couple of reminders. One is, uh, if you brought your cell phone into the sanctuary, please check it and make sure that it's in the turned off position. The other is that uh, we try to maintain some silence in the sanctuary. So before service, if you want to have a conversation, if you could do that in the narthex or out in the, in the gardens. Um, for a couple of reasons. One is because people like to come in and pray and meditate before service. Sean always does a beautiful prelude for us. And the other is you're being recorded. So everything that you say, this picks up everything in the sanctuary. So there are things that may be said that you do not want to be broadcast to the world. <laughs> so just, you know, step out into the narthex and, and uh, that way we won't pick, pick it up on our recording. So um, our guest soloist this morning is Desiree Murat, and we are delighted to have her with us. So let's give her a warm welcome. <laughs> and we have another very special guest, uh, Reverend Greg Murat. Greg <laughs> Christ 
or any stranger would feel in it that they were with friends. And from Charles Fillmore, fill us now with richness of spirit and purpose. God bless this church with substance so that success and prosperity are the order of every day. And so it is. John, your wife is on the front row here, if you're looking for her. <laughs> this is a part-time ushering job up here as well, so. Today's daily word is thoughtful, and the affirmation is my kind thoughts and deeds are a blessing. Today, I bring the love and peace of God to all of my encounters by being thoughtful. More than politeness and deeper than kindness, thoughtfulness means I consider the comfort and happiness of others equal to my own. My intention is to let those in my life know what they mean to me. I may reach out to someone who needs an encouraging word, letting them know they have what it takes to succeed. I may surprise someone with a kind act, anticipating a need and taking care of something for them before they have to ask. Each thoughtful word and act lets those in my life know how important they are to me and how worthy they are of my time and attention. And from Hebrews 13, verse 16, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And that's our daily word for today. <coughs> Going to state our weather blessing, we hold this near and dear to our heart this time of year, but we also hold it to be the truth for anyone that's experiencing a weather event. Divine love prevails in all weather conditions. The earth is blessed, and harmony, order, and protection are assured. And so it is. I have a few announcements this morning. Uh, one is, uh, if you're interested in signing up for a monthly call from one of our chaplains, you can do that. Uh, you can call the church office, or you can send an email to unitychurch at unityschool.com. So once a month, you'll get a lovely um, call from one of the chaplains. You can either pick up the phone or let it go uh, to recording so that you can listen to it over and over again. So we encourage you to take advantage of that. We have a few volunteer opportunities. Uh, we need ushers for our first service at 925 and for our second service at 11. And it wouldn't be every Sunday, it's on a rotating basis, but it's a wonderful way to serve your community. I've shared this a number of times. When I started at this church, I ushered for a couple of years. And it was really rewarding because I got to see people as they were coming through the door. I got to know a lot of people through that way. So if that's something you're interested in, let us know. Uh, we have a need for one or two other audio visual volunteers. We have a few, but we'd like to add a couple to our list. Would be every Sunday, and it would be about a three hour commitment on a Sunday. Don't have to have any training. We will be glad to train you. So um, just let the church office or one of us know that you're interested in that. Then in terms of what goes on here on a weekly basis, we have our prayer group on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Uh, Wednesday evening at 6.30, we have our meditation group. So beautiful times of coming together and praying and meditating within a group, which is so powerful. So take advantage of one of those opportunities. Thursday mornings at 7 a.m., we have our Thursday morning prosperity coffee. That's done through a teleconference. Uh, we're covering Lowell Fillmore's book, The Prayer Way to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. So you're welcome to join that at any time. Uh, reminder, our bookstore is open, so if you want to browse the bookstore after the service, feel free to do that. And then I think my last announcement is just a save the date. So Saturday, October 15th, is our annual blessing of the animals. And we've been doing that at this church for many, many years. Um, it's a lovely event. So if you're able to bring your pet, uh, you can bring them and they'll be blessed. If you're not able to do that, we have a way of, um, you can provide us with a picture, 
and they all re uh, they'll receive a blessing in that way. So uh, over the years, we have had many different types of animals. We've had boa constrictors, we've had uh, turtles, we've had cats, dogs, horses. Um, seems like we had a spider, but I don't remember for sure. But all are welcome in God's house. So if you have a pet and uh, you'd like to bring them, um, you know, just mark that date and we'll, we'll be announcing more about that. So that does conclude our announcements. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can call the church office and they would be glad to help you. So now I'm going to invite you to get comfortable in your chairs. If you have anything in your hands, you may want to set that aside. I'm going to make our statement of truth and uh, make it one time and then I'll ask you to join with me. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the Good Omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the Good Omnipotent. So just breathing into the power and the truth of that statement. Taking it into our inner being so that we move, live, and have our being from that truth. We allow any concerns or any cares just to wash away. And we stand firm in knowing there is only one presence and one power active in our lives and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. And for that, we are so grateful. Thank you, God. And now, uh, Desiree will sing the Lord's Prayer in preparation for our time of meditation. First, we feel our good heart. We feel that heart of us, which is the soul, the seat of the soul. And we slow down our thoughts, our feelings, and 
rest lightly and easily. In the seat of our soul, the heart, our heart of hearts. And as we move more deeply into this shared experience, this presence, we are moved. We're moved off any stuck position that we've had up till now. Any limiting, restricting thinking or attitudes. We flow as our soul's evolutionary journey. moves us forward, we feel the magnetic pull of that soul essence that pulls us forward. We want to know who we are. We want to find that peace that passes all understanding that is found nowhere else but the soul. As we rest lightly and easily in our heart space, we love all the hearts and all the souls who are here with us today. And in the end, for all the hearts and souls of humanity who, like it or not, agree with or not are on their journey, expressing in their own unique ways. We are a part of this infinite movement. We are aligned with the presence of God within. We are protected by God's love, wisdom, knowledge, and grace. The God consciousness within helps us discover more about who we are. Thank you, God, for the gift of spiritual intuition. Thank you, God, for the alignment, conscious, subconscious, superconscious of our minds. And we move into this moment of silence, just listening, just listening, other. We're grateful that we are a soul evolving and growing, changing, and being. Thank you. Thank you, infinite spirit. Thank you. Living, loving presence.
was so beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm floating. And I got to hear Sean play two preludes. It was beautiful. So good to be here. So good to see you. And we are souls in evolution. Today is the day in which we make a new commitment to our journey. We back it up with our will. But first there has to come a desire, the desire of the soul. The desire of the soul is to evolve, right? I think everybody in this room is going to agree. We're all here to evolve. We're, we're souls in evolution. That's why we were placed here. We, we, we came into this lifetime with a plan, with a design, with a desire to grow, to learn, to change, to be. And this is the first of all your lifetimes. in which you actually came in and said, I'm going to go for it. I am going to go for it spiritually. In the other lifetime, she said, well, I think I'll be religious. I think I'll be a courtesan. I think I'll uh, be a, a warrior. And in this lifetime, you got to the point on your soul's evolutionary journey where you said, I'm, I'm ready to do something more. I'm ready to keep, do what I came here for. Now, everything in nature evolves. You know that. You look around, you see all the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, it all is evolving. But all of those kingdoms evolve unconsciously. And then in the human kingdom, human beings evolve unconsciously too. And isn't there a lot of unconsciousness? And we look back at our lives. We evolved kind of unconsciously. We just kind of bopped through life. I remember when I was in the youth of unity, my best friend dropped out of all spirituality and didn't want to have anything to do with me. And he says, I, I don't want all that questing, he called it. I just want to bop through life. Well, that's a choice too, because that's his next step in the soul's evolutionary journey. But the question is, what is your next evolutionary step? What is your soul calling you to do? You, the people in this room, chose to consciously become involved in the unfoldment of your soul evolution. Not just bop through life. You're questing too. And you're ready to make a move in your life. So what is your heart drawing you to experience? Your heart is pulling you magnetically. You are being pulled magnetically forward into something. And the trick about it, the setup is that you don't know what it is. Oh, you have an idea. I have an idea of what it is. Intellectually, I read a book. <laughs> I listened to somebody tell me about it. But you get to the point where your soul calls you and says, it's time now, it's time to activate that hidden program that was placed in you at the very beginning of time, that was there in your lifetime, and this was the one where you came in and you said, I'm ready to do something, I'm gonna make a move here. I'm gonna make a move here, and I'll make a move like I've never done it before, and I'm gonna do it consciously for the very first time. For most of us, it's the very first time of that. And I ask you, can you remember a time in your life when you were very young, when you could feel that choice, that soul evolutionary pull, where you were a little kid? I remember I was like two or three and I was running and I skinned my knee and I got up and I cried. But I cried really loud and hard because I wasn't just crying because I skinned my knee. I was crying because I, in that moment, remembered that there was something that I forgot that I swore I would never forget. And I couldn't remember what it was. And I really wailed. And my mom looked at my knee and said, well, what's the problem here, you know? I'll clean it up. But that is, I still remember it. I don't know how old I was, maybe three. Do you remember being a child? And, 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 and maybe you were in a church, because that's a place people experience it. Maybe you were in nature. Maybe it was your, your loving grandma. She just was unconditional love. I don't know. There's a time in your life when you were really younger 
when that program that you came into this lifetime with, or soul evolution, you were aware of it. You were aware of it, but you didn't, you didn't have words for it. It's probably too little. I know uh, one friend said, I, I just want to talk to God. I want God to talk to me. And this is a little child, that's what they thought would happen physically. So for you, what was it? And then the second question is, when did that program get activated in your adult years? You can go back to that, that experience you had as a child and say, okay, this is where my soul knew on some level, but not, not maybe with the language I would use today, that I'm the soul in evolution, that, I, that God loves me or whatever. But here, I'm an adult and something happened. And it's so funny, if we went around this room and we, we asked, when was it? Everybody in this room would have a story. And we all have our stories, don't we? And, and some of us would have a story about something very positive. I, I went on a retreat and I suddenly I had this experience and some of them would be very negative. And it was, oh my gosh, I hit bottom. And I decided, okay, there's gotta be something else here. And you know what? It doesn't matter because it was that moment because ultimately in your soul's evolutionary journey, there's no positives or negatives. It's all just stuff. It's the raw materials out of which your life is made and what you thought was negative is positive and what you thought was positive was negative and you wound up in a room with other people in recovery or you had a, uh, an illness and, and there was a need for healing of your heart or your body or your soul or something. There was something, and, it, and that was when, that was that moment when you embarked on what we call the spiritual path. And what are you doing about it? Because it's so easy to fall back asleep, isn't it? To get complacent, to say, you know, this is comfortable. This is all right. Dolphins are playing this afternoon. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to the beach. I heard about that new brunch place down here. It's, it's pretty good. And then we do that and we find out, oh, it, it satisfies us for a moment, but it'll never satisfy you. It will never satisfy me. It was a setup. It's not supposed to satisfy you. It's that peg that won't quite fit. It doesn't, it's, it's designed that way. The third dimensional physical life that you live, your personality life, is designed to not quite work. Now, somebody's going to sit here and think right now, I know, wait a minute, this is positive thinking unity. You can't talk this way. Yeah, that's what I thought until I was about 16. I was in the Youth of Unity, and they taught us a book called Lessons in Truth by Emily Cady. It was the book that was the adult trigger on the spiritual path for Maya Angelou. When she was given that book, that's when she started on her spiritual journey. How many of you have been exposed to Lessons in Truth? And so you, I was shocked because I had been raised in unity and I thought the teaching was to be a successful personality. To be happy all the time and a successful personality and get everything I want the way I want it and that's what it was about. And then I read in Lessons in Truth and she doesn't pull any punches. You grow and you evolve and you evolve to that point. You evolve and you add, you, add, you add and add and add to your personality until it breaks down. You, you, you say to yourself, this isn't satisfying me anymore. The Peggy Lee song, is that all there is? Is this good? This isn't, this isn't satisfying me. And it could be a positive or a negative thing, but whatever it is, oh. And in the book she says, you have to let go of your, and dismantle even, your understanding of your personality so that you can move into what? Your individuality, which is Christ consciousness, the higher self, the infinite self. It's that next step in your soul's evolution. And they didn't tell me about that in Sunday school. I mean, they cocked up those words, but I, I, I was a little offended at 16 when I found out that my job here on earth was not to have a great personality. It was to let go of my personality and to move into my individuality, which is the spiritual nature, to move from my ego to my soul.
from my lower self to my higher self, from my personality self to my infinite self. And, and then integrate the personality. You live in the world, but not of it. It's not that we're not supposed to you know, enjoy the brunch and do the thing, but that's never gonna satisfy us because it's not designed to satisfy us. It's not supposed to satisfy us. We are made of greater stuff than that. And just as life evolved unconsciously on the animal level, and now we're in the human level, which also evolves unconsciously, look around. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I'm going to evolve consciously until I reach a certain point and I say, no, I'm not evolving anymore. Oh, I know this is going to push some buttons here. I'm going to move from soul evolution to soul involution. I'm going within. And I'm going to let go of and dismantle the things that I thought I was and my understanding as I thought it was so that I can grow into something greater. But I don't know what the heck it is. And it's scary to me. Or as Martha Creek would say, it's scary to me. And, and, and that's moving inward into your soul awareness. So you evolved and evolved and evolved and evolved. And the, the human being that's doing the soul evolution thinks that's all there is until they find out it's not. Just like if, if I talk to the squirrel and I said to the squirrel, little squirrel, um, you, do you know that there's another expression where you could, you don't have to just go gather up nuts. You can get into a car and drive to a store and buy them. <laughs> and you don't have to live in that tree. You can live in a condo. And the squirrel would, would they wouldn't it wouldn't even respond because it wouldn't understand. You're moving from that limited human consciousness into your divine consciousness. From soul evolution, which has up till now been an accumulation of things and experiences, to dismantling and letting go of all the things that are preventing you from experiencing the next level of your being. And I looked it up, I, I thought. What did Charles Fillmore say about soul involution? And he wrote about it in Discover the Power of Within, uh, no, um, uh, The Twelve Powers of Man, and also in Mysteries of Genesis. He talked about how in, you build in consciousness and consciousness and consciousness through evolution until you take, start to take it down, take down your understanding as you understood it to be, so that in humility you grow into involution. Are you following me? Are you tracking? Yes. yes. So, so, so that's why we're here. And you came in with a program in this lifetime, which you sensed as a child, and then it got activated, switched on as an adult, and now you're sitting in this room right here, and you're looking at yourself in the mirror of your soul and saying, well, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing? And what does it take to really involve myself so involution, moving from the personality to the individuality, individuality, it's inner unfoldment. And it takes three things. I got three magic words. One is desire, commitment, and will. The desire of your heart. Is this love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Is this seek first the kingdom and all the things will be added unto you? Is this the most important thing to you? Or is it 10%? And 90% is some other stuff. Or is it 40 and 60%? Where are you right now in your journey? How important is this soul Unfoldment, this awakening in your God consciousness, your Christ consciousness, your awakening spiritually. You got to put your own words to it, folks, because everybody comes from a different background. And how much, uh, how, how much of an energy do you have behind it? You have to have a burning desire for this to truly ignite, because it must ignite. It must reach critical mass and then throw a nuclear. It just, it just. Chain reaction takes place in your soul. 
So the desire of your heart, what do I truly desire? And then the second part is, what are you committed to? What is my commitment? What is my commitment? And the commitment part is, how committed are you when things get tough? Because they're going to get tough because, as I've said before in this room, love brings up whatever's in its way. So whatever it is, this love, this desire of your heart to grow spiritually will bring up the stuff I like it. And I, um, I remember when I was a child going to the dentist and he gave me a little red pill. Do you remember getting that? And when I brushed my teeth as a kid, I was to take the pill, dissolve in my mouth, and then it would stain the parts that I missed. And then I would know what I needed to brush. So the commitment step is that part where you get to look in the mirror and see the red places that you miss, the places that need to be dealt with within your soul, the healing, the forgiveness, the self-aware, the awareness, the observer part of you. And, and, and you've got to be You've got to be really diligent about it. You have to develop something called the active observer, the observer self that looks and can see, yes, this is, I missed a place. When the dentist told me to do that, I wasn't supposed to do it and then look and feel bad about myself because I have a red mouth or I look terrible or something. No, it's an opportunity to take stock and to become aware and then to clean up the things that need to be cleaned up. And, that's always a work of forgiveness, is it not? Yes. Isn't it always about forgiveness? Yes. Letting go and, and releasing the, the, the limited consciousness? So that's your commitment. How strong is your commitment? And I want to invite you to go home today and write a commitment. I am committed to my soul growth. I'm committed to awakening in God. You know, the two most spiritually aware people I've ever met in my life had a commitment. But when they were little kids in the teenage years, they understood one of them wanted to marry God, wanted to somehow fall in love with God, fall in love with God is a better way. The other one wanted to understand God. Very, you know, she was very intellectual. And it, they both got to the same place. So write it in your own words. I want to, I want to know God. I want to awaken spiritually. And then sign, sign your name. When you set an intention into motion like that, what happens is that you set the whole universe is turned on its axis and is set into motion to support the intention of your soul. Your conscious, subconscious, and superconscious mind get into alignment and then move you forward and circumstances start changing. Synchronicity starts happening in your life. Your life starts showing up in a different way. So that's the commitment step. That's kind of what happened to me back three years ago when I was, oh my God, I, mean, I, uh, I came here for the second time. I was here for a year and it was like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to go do this other spiritual work inwardly and I, I, I'm, I've got to take that step and I did that. And then just this last couple of weeks, it's like, okay, now I can go speak again because I haven't spoken for three years in the church. And, um, but, but, but you make a commitment and things will show up and you'll be guided to do what you need to do. And the, tr and the sneaky thing is you can't know what that is. When you make the commitment, you can't know what, really what it is you're committing to. I have an idea intellectually what spiritual awakening is and I guarantee that that is not really what it's going to be. Because if it was what I'm thinking right now, I'd already be there. And so, so, it, so it's a little scary, isn't it? When you go, oh my gosh, I want to commit to something, I don't know what it is. That doesn't, that feels kind of scary. And that's okay. That's okay, that's just part of the process. And you gotta take yourself in hand and love yourself enough to let yourself feel all those feelings and just keep moving. Because the third step, there's desire, there's commitment, and there's will. You have to will to will the will of God. You have to move with your will and stand up to your lesser consciousness and day by day apply 
your desire and your commitment. And that is an act of will that you exercise every day. And how do you exercise that will? Well, these are your ways that you spiritually show up in your life every day. These are your spiritual practices every day. Do you meditate every day? Five minutes. It's better to meditate for five minutes a day than it is to meditate for a half hour once a week or at a retreat for a weekend once a year. It's Charles Fillmore said, sporadic efforts count for little. Consistency is the key. So just, and you say, well, what should I do? Well, take your daily word and don't just wolf it down like you wolf down your breakfast when you're trying to get someplace in a hurry. Sit with it for five minutes. That's what my dad did. Every morning of his life, he would read his daily word, and then he'd take his affirmations from silent unity and just sit there and just silently take them within. There's many different ways to do this, but take some time to meditate. Another thing is develop your observer self, that observation within you that observes and catches things maybe before you take action or if you do take an action that you realize that you wish you hadn't have taken, it catches you in it. And it isn't about being a perfectionist and beating yourself up because this lifetime is designed that you will not do everything perfectly. This life is designed that you will make lots and lots and lots of mistakes. That's part of the learning journey. Look at nature, it's like that too. It's, and that's how you grow and that's how you, how you change. And so your observer self brings you to greater and greater consciousness. And isn't this a journey of consciousness? And so as you become more and more conscious, you become more and more aware, and that takes an observer self. Another step is journaling. Journaling. And I know, I don't know how many, is there anybody in this room that likes, really likes to journal? It's okay, we're not going to judge you. Two, three. So the rest of us, for the rest of us, we're envious a little bit of you. But the rest of us, maybe we need to just, because journaling, if you start journaling, you're going to find that you get letters from God. You, you, you find out revelations come to you. You find out about things about your subconscious. You find out things about yourself you really didn't want to know, which is, open, which is necessary too. you got to let it all hang out when you journal as well but you also find that your superconscious mind comes through. And there are five questions of journaling, and they're in this book, Spiritual Power Tools by Jane Hart, who's my teacher up in Dartmouth Springs. She's 89 years old this year. And the five questions, it's in the chapter on journaling. The five questions are in here, and they are, what am I feeling? It's first. Second is, what's going on that's causing me to feel this way? The third is, is there, is this a pattern in my life? How is this a pattern? The fourth is, what is my soul trying to tell me right now? And the fifth is, if my soul were in charge and not my ego, how would I handle this differently? And you just write this out. Just, just answer the questions. Of course, don't feel limited in just this method. And if you want a copy of this book, it's for free. All you got to do is go online and get it. Um, just go to centerforenlightenment.com, centerforenlightenment.com, and the, right on the page, just click on it, fill out the form, and it'll be mailed to you for free. But it's a journaling method that will help you to exercise your will day by day. And I journal every day of my life, not necessarily longer than a few, a minute, 30 seconds. Sometimes I spend longer periods. But journaling is an important way to exercise your will. Forgiveness, and I know forgiveness is a way to exercise love, but it's also an exercise of your will day by day. Every day when things come up in your memory, to know what to do with it, to know to forgive. So these are the different, the different ways that you exercise your will. So what are those three ways to activate the soul evolutionary journey that you're now on that's now turning inward so that you can unfold this Christ consciousness within you. The first is desire. The second is commitment. And the third is will. And I don't
don't know about you, but the energy in this room is so strong right now. I can feel it. It's because you have a desire. You have made a commitment. You are exercising your will. You are a soul in evolution, and you have reached that point in your soul's journey where you're ready to move beyond just trying to get more stuff and accumulate more things and having a more appealing personality and a brighter smile or whatever it is. You're ready to move inwardly. So let's just take that in a moment of reflection and prayer. I just love what Mary Cupperly told me 30 years ago. She said, I just sit and I listen. I don't pray, I don't even meditate, I just listen. So just listen for a moment. And realize that your soul's desire, your true desire of your heart, is to awaken to the truth of your being. And what is the truth of my being? The truth of my being is the fulfillment of my heart's desire, the love of my heart, my soul's yearning. And I make a commitment to know the truth of my being, to awaken to my infinite nature and my infinite self. And I back that up with will one day at a time each day, committing to back up my desire with will. I will to will the will of God. I will to know God. I will to love God. And I will to awaken in my higher consciousness. this day goes forward that the love divine love moves forward, moves me forward goes before me making the crooked places straight and divine love is my divine order bringing everything in my life into order perfect harmony perfect peace and balance Thank you, dear God. So it is. Amen. Thank you, Greg. How blessed are we with such a beautiful message, beautiful music, beautiful day. We are truly, truly blessed. This is the time of our service where we uh, bless our offerings. Um, we have a couple of different ways of giving. You can uh, put your offering in the basket as you leave. If you want to give by credit card, you can do that. Uh, we have an app called Tithely. Uh, there's information about that on the table in the narthex. So just holding your offering in your hands or in your consciousness, I will take our offering blessing one time, and then I'll ask you to join with me. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. Together? Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. So we just take a moment to bless these gifts. We feel that sense of gratitude and thanksgiving for the opportunity to give. The opportunity to be an open channel of God's love, God's wisdom, God's peace, and God's abundance. 
And so we see these gifts flowing through us, rushing forth to bless many. And then they return to the giver, pressed down and overflowing with abundance. We are part of that eternal channel of good. We take a moment to give thanks for the many blessings in our lives. We bless our beautiful church, each person that's touched by this ministry. We bless our school, every child, every family, every staff member. And we know that unity of Delray Beach is that expanding center of Christ's light. We are radiating out that light to our community and to the world. And we are so grateful. Thank you, God. Amen. And now we're going to stand and sing the peace song.